Hey, Christy. Yeah, Lindsay. What do you call basil with a bad attitude? What? Pestomistic. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Thematic. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy, a backyard gardener from Colorado. These days, gardening has gotten very popular, and my friends and I have noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down Tulips. Well, hello, gardeners. And wannabe gardeners. And people who love basil. Yeah. And welcome back, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. And hi, Christy. So great to be back. And we're talking about basil this week. Yeah. Everyone's favorite herb. My favorite herb, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also coming up this week is National Pollinators Week, the last full week in June. That's so nice. It's great that they've got a week. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> do you have Do you have lots of bees and butterflies in your garden yet? Well, you know, I have my cat mint is up and going crazy, mm. and it's huge this year. So yeah, the bees have really been loving that. Um, the butterflies, not 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 a lot yet, but I'm I'm optimistic. I am too. Of course, we did have a lot of Miller moths. Oh, my gosh. And those are pollinators. Are they really? Are yeah. they also? Oh, well, in that case, my house is well pollinated. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Do your cats eat Miller Moss? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's Archie's favorite time of the year. Yeah, I think I was worried they were eating. My cats were eating so many Miller Moss, I thought they were going to get sick. Yeah. But did they? I, I don't, well, just normal cat sick. Normal, yeah. yeah of course they did. They're cats. They absolutely got sick. Right. Yeah, of course yeah. they did. Well... How is your garden going? Well, it's going um, mixed bag. Oh. Uh, I've got a great, the tomato basil and um, marigold bed is doing really, really well. Granted, you know, that means everything's like a foot tall. It's not where I want it to be sure. in my deep impatience for all of those things, but um, it's going well. And I have another bed where I put all of my greens and my arugula, radishes, and a bunch of cool weather things. And it's just not doing a lot. Really? And I'm confused by it because this is when like the lettuce should have been well up by now, right? Yes. Yeah, well yeah. up. And when did you plant it? Well, I planted it pretty close to the beginning of May. I oh, think. yeah. It should be up. It should be. And so I don't know what's wrong, but I got a little cheapy, um, like a garden soil pH test, like uh -huh. a little buck 50 something. And I tested it today so I could tell you. And all of our <laughs> podcast listeners, what might be wrong? And it's apparently it's very, very alkaline. Oh. Is that bad? I don't really know. I, I've always heard that what you want is you want it to be neutral. So okay. you don't want it to be too alkaline or too acidic. Yeah. Well, maybe so. that's got something to do with it because it's definitely not neutral. Oh, interesting. I don't know what I add to it to make it more acidic, to balance it out. Yeah. I don't know. I have Compost. No Compost. Boy, I thought I'd composted it with an inch of its life. Oh, but oh, then maybe it's too much compost. Oh man. Honestly, I feel like <laughs> I go either I need to do some research, basically. Um Well, you know, I was also gonna wonder and ponder this, mm -hmm. Lindsay, is that we've had so much rain in May. Yeah. It's possible your seeds just got too wet. And mm. maybe they maybe they floated they floated away mm -hmm. too in the rain. That's so true. Cause the arugula actually did quite well, although now it's getting a little bolty. Uh huh. Um, and I'm trying to now beat that every day, but uh, yeah, maybe they just sort of flood it out. That's yeah. so true. Or you could try adding peat moss. All right. You know, I mean, that's what folks do with real alkaline soil is they'll add peat moss. Okay. I'm. So, I will. I might give that a go and see because I. Or just try it again. See yeah. What just take it up and try it again. I mean, and how much is a packet of? Right. Exactly. Seeds? It's not that much. So I actually this morning I added a few and I added some some chard. Oh, this was charred, nice. which is supposed to be kind of can do a warm weather ish thing as well. Yeah. So I'm hoping something green will, will come up and be more than two inches tall. Yeah. Just kind of measure like how much labor do you want to put into it? Yeah. Do you want to have fun planting seeds or do you want to like dig in stuff? Right. I know it's true. I just want the satisfaction of the result. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes you got to. But you still have your hydroponic greens, right? I do. I do. I've actually been planting a ton of herbs in that and I planted out some parsley. 
this past. I got a couple of big parsleys from it and some cilantro I oh, got. Oh, nice. My rosemary that was like a two-inch stick. Yeah. Last time it's about an eight-inch bushy. Get situation. out. Yeah, it's great. Oh my great. gosh, that's so exciting. It is exciting. And I, I, every time I just adjust it a little, my hand smells so good. You are the first person I've ever known who's been able to germinate rosemary. I'm so excited about I'm it. Impressed. But now I need to like put it in a pot somehow. Mm-hmm. And I'm terrified that I'm going to kill it. Sure. On accident. So now I'm like, oh, now I don't want to touch it because it's actually doing so oh, well. I so it's scary. I don't know. I might have to see if I can put my brave pants on and try to try to put it in some dirt. But yeah. the roots are a little different because they're they were so used to it. I think you should go for it. I'm gonna say th- this is the universe granted you with the ability to germinate a rosemary bush from seed. I don't think this is your only one. Okay. Oh, that's a that's a nice way to think about it. Yeah, no guts, no glory. Yeah. Let's get yes, into it. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead and I would repot it. And and um and then make sure you give it a nice sunny spot. Yeah, that's true. I'm gonna I might leave it inside and like leave it next to the hydroponic Smart. light for like a couple of weeks. Yes, don't shock it. Don't shock it. Just take it out an hour and mm-hmm. an hour every day. All right. That's gonna be um, my goal. I'll 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 update you next time. You, oh, that's you've cool. you've imbued me with courage. And you got tomatoes in, you said. I got my tomato plants in, yeah. Okay. What got, kind of tomatoes are you growing? Oh, um, Cherokee Purple. Ooh. Yeah, my first time doing that. I've got some Super Sweet 100s. Of course. You got to have Super you Sweet gotta. 100s. You got to. And the Sun Golds. And, oh, um, nice. Those I'm, are little cherries, right? Yeah, Sun yeah. Golds, little, yeah. little cherry tomatoes and um, some um, uh, a German, a German tomato, which I think according to the packet is like a smaller kind of a brandy wine-ish. Oh, nice. It's not like a striped German. But it's probably like a- not a very sweet tomato is my guess and no sense of humor. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was where you eat it if you're listening. Uh, but a bone. <laughs> what about you? How's your garden going? Well, I've got my whole vegetable bed in, which is great. Yeah. It took a lot of work. Because I had to redo a lot of stuff because of that sewer. Right. I was going to ask, how did that all work out? It's all in and everything's going, you know, not too shabby. Okay. I'm pretty happy with everything. I have in, um, this is what I have in my vegetable garden this year. Beans, cabbage, celery, lots of peppers, broccoli, eggplant, cauliflower, radish, tomato, dill, marjoram, pumpkins, and... Of course, basil. Yeah. Which is just started to peak up. So yeah, I'm very excited good. about it. What's going the best so far, though, are morning glories that have reseeded themselves all over my vegetable garden. Oh. I swear, every day I go out there and there's another a thousand morning glory volunteers in there, and all I do is just puck them. Puck yeah. Them are you are you leaving any to be like visually interesting or yes you, but, or would you have a choice in the matter right i think i'm leaving one percent mm-hmm. of all the thousands of morning glory babies that i have everywhere and you know if you don't pull it up the whole way yeah it just reshoots it up just again reshoots it's, up. yeah i've so. got a bunch of um bindweed that's like <gasps> crept up all around everywhere because you know the rest of my yard that's not a garden a garden bed is, uh-huh. is a dirt patch that's full of bindweed and i had a very nice neighbor um, you know, kind of like weed whack a bunch of the weeds mm-hmm. down, but a bunch of that was bindweed and it kind of sprayed everywhere. Yes, because it'll it'll do that. Yeah. Well, I have Lindsay, I have gotten the bindweed mite from the state of Colorado, which is a microscopic little critter that is supposed to lay egg its eggs on bindweed and then therefore the plant um it's called galling. And so it, the leaves will fold up, and then within a couple of years, it'll kill the bindweed. So no I'll let you know kidding. how it goes. Yeah, does it? It just and that just focuses on the bindweed. Just or? focus on bindweed. Oh, I'll put a link in the show notes for friends who are in Colorado to check it out. And, That's brilliant. Um, it took me two years on the wait list. Okay, because everybody is like, please help yes. me with this. But you might be one in your state, wherever you are, if you are suffering from bindweed. Yeah, um, check out those mites. <laughs> those <yeah>. mites, <laughs> make those mites work for us. Those mites might help. Oh, no. <laughs> they might. They might, though. They might. <laughs> if they do, they I, they have a fan in me. 
Uh, I have been so much planting, and when I first started planting, it was all very gentle, like, here you go, little plant, and <laughs> talking to it and saying, you can do this. And I was transplanting some difficult things. I was transplanting poppies, which is hard. Is it? Because they have a long tap root, but I'm like, oh. you know what? You can do this. You volunteered to be in my vegetable garden, and you grew in this weird soil from that was dug up from my sewer, so you go ahead. You can, you're going to be okay talking so gently. Yeah. But now, because I'm going away for two weeks... Leaving my poor garden oh, alone for two weeks. Oh, babes. I have so much to plant out that I'm just like, okay, you're going to be fine. Toughen up. Get in there. <laughs> just I'm just throwing. I have all this winter sowing to yeah. get out there. And I'm just- You're like, grow like you mean it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Just, like, just tossing it in, throwing it in. No soft words. What's next? What's else? What else do you have to get in still? Oh, I have to get in. Foxglove. Oh, yeah. Black-eyed yeah. Susans, hollyhocks, echinacea, petunias, and Mexican hat. That is all winter sowed beautifully. Oh, that's so great. Fortunately, not everything did well because otherwise I have to get that out too. Yeah, that's I, right. I, I overdid it. It's self-selected out. Some yeah. of it was like, mm, no, nah, not this year. Something like when you go to the garden center and you get all excited. Yes. And you just like, oh, the next thing you know, you're like, how did I just spend $200 on a plant? Oh my gosh. And now truly. I have to plant it and find room for it. Yeah. I got a bunch of um, nasturtiums this year. I winter sowed them. Oh, I nice. didn't know that. I didn't think that, I didn't know if they'd work or not, but they have, and they're taken and they're going, and it's great. So oh. I'm excited. My petunias are going. My pansies are a little lackluster, but I'm I'm optimistic for them still. Oh, we'll see. Oh, so good. oh, you and you winter sowed pansies. Yeah, I winter sowed all of that and oh, snapdragons. Nice. Yeah, so I'm hoping that it all kind of good gets its oomph going because it was so wet and cold so much of and may now, yeah i it kind was. of i got a little a little um ambitious and i planted things out oh, earlier than i was supposed to because i was so excited and impatient mm. and then i was like Ugh, we'll see it's got some catching up to do now that it's finally got a little oh good out. well i had the opposite problem because i was so busy i got everything out late yeah but maybe that was fortuitous it might have been it might have been and now and you're gonna go for two weeks and come back and it's gonna be like this Garden oh, it's gonna be great. eaten in your backyard. I told my handsome and handy husband, I said, just just water it. Don't worry about weeds. I'll take care of it when I get back. And all the morning glories are going to be huge. I can oh, take out my garden. Are. <laughs> they are. But at least when they do, they're they're pretty. They're pretty. They That's have right. that going for them. Oh, my God. Well, you folks may be wondering, what the heck is winter sowing? Yeah. And if you want to know what that is, just check out the always interesting and sometimes humorous Upside Down Dictionary on our website. For any words or terms that you do not understand. And you can also check out um, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Yeah. Um, we have great fun stuff up there. And we also want to say thank you to everybody who's a member of the Garden Party. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Garden Party. And that's you, Lindsay. You're a it member is. of the Garden Party. Thanks. Thanks, me. <laughs> what a champ I am. <laughs> and these are really... Uh, kind folks and good looking folks too, oh, I should yeah. say. Brilliant, really, you could say. Um, they give us a couple bucks each month to offset the expenses of putting on this podcast. And we really appreciate it. And depending upon what level you join up on, you can get uh, some fun rewards like seeds from our gardens or some merch like coffee cups or t-shirts or tote bags, notebooks. My, it's the, the options are almost endless. Stickers, really. yeah. stickers. <laughs> stickers. <laughs> okay. You could have a tulip on virtually anything. <laughs> That's right. So I hope that if you're listening here, that you'll also consider becoming a member of the Garden Party. Oh, Lindsay, I think it's time for a pod play. I think it is. This is something special, handcrafted, something fun just for gardeners. Enjoy. Are you tired of the same old boring weeks on your calendar? Well, get ready for an epic twist of nature. Introducing National Pollinators Week. Oh, hello there, little bee. Are you ready to rock this pollen party? That's right, folks. The first full week in June is time to celebrate our buzzing buddies, the pollinators who keep our world blooming and thriving. National Pollinators Week is where we pay tribute to our tiny heroes who work tirelessly to pollinate our plants and make honey. Hey, you. Yes, you. Do you want your garden to be the talk of the town? During National Pollinators Week, we challenge you to create the most fabulous bee-friendly garden ever seen. Get ready to unleash your inner horticulturist and go wild with flowers, plants, and maybe even a disco ball for the bees. And wait, there's more. We've got the Bee Olympics. 
where bees compete in daring feats of aerial acrobatics like synchronized flying and the hundred petal dash. Don't worry, butterflies. We haven't forgotten about you. We've got the Butterflutter by Ballet, where butterflies dance their way to victory, gracefully pirouetting through hoops and landing on flower petals like true performers. But that's not all. National Pollinators Week is also your chance to don your best bee or butterfly costume and join the bug parade. Strut your stuff alongside our buzzing friends and show off your pollinator pride. So mark your calendars, grab your gardening gloves, and let's make National Pollinators Week the most buzz-tastic celebration ever. Get ready to pollinate the fun and spread the joy all around. National Pollinators Week, where flowers, friends, and laughter bloom like never before. Warning, side effects may include excessive giggling, an uncontrollable urge to dance, and an increased appreciation for our tiny pollinator pals. All right. Everybody, welcome back. We're getting into some basil. Mm. And um, it's got, uh, it's such an interesting plant. It has such an interesting history and, and mythology to so many different cultures, which I did not know. Apparently, it's native um, to India and Asia. Oh. Um, and um, the word basil uh, is, comes maybe from the Latin um, basilicum, um, uh, also, or basilic. Basilicon, which is Greek, meaning royal or king. Sometimes it's called like the king herb. That makes total sense. Mm -hmm. It is the king herb. It is. It's it's the one, I don't know if everybody, it's the one I feel like everybody really wants to have. If we're going to have oh, one. Oh, when you, if people are out there envisioning like, I want a garden. Yeah. There's two things in it. Yeah. Tomatoes and basil. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's, the, that's the first things I think about. My whole goal this year is to have an overabundance of tomato and basil. Oh, fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's also associated with the word basilisk. <gasps> really? In theory. That um, makes sense. And the basilisk is like a mythical serpent from Roman legend. And basil is said to be an antidote for its venom. Oh. Yeah. So if you get ever bitten by a mythological <laughs> venomous anything i would say try basil first yes it could save your life it can't hurt and carry if not it around with you yeah carry it just, you should have a little satchel always um and the <laughs> earliest accounts of it it's interesting the accounts of its attributes are sort of all over the map some of the earliest accounts are associated with anger and hatred Ooh. and it is said that the greeks and romans ancient greeks greeks and romans believed that in order for basil to grow properly you had to curse and yell while planting its seeds oh my gosh like you mother effing yeah, yeah. I hate you <laughs> yeah so give it a go if it's not working and you get mad and you insult it that could help oh I don't wow know. see i've been doing that all wrong then <laughs> I've been like, here, little sweet basil seeds, please grow. It depends on what you want to put out in the world, but sometimes swearing just comes to me naturally. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. But alternatively, it's also been associated with love. Um, and the poem, I didn't know that there's a poem by Keats called Isabella and the Pot of Basil, where um, he describes how Isabella, when finding about, out about the murder of her lover, Lorenzo, she digs him up. Cuts off his head and buries it in a pot of basil plants. And I'm not clear why. I'm not going to lie. I haven't read this poem. <laughs> so but it's either as a tribute or he or she hopes his head, he's going to grow back. Yeah. Or she's hoping <laughs> he's going to grow back. I was just thinking, does she think that's compost? Because I think she should have composted his head first. It might have made the nutrients more available. <laughs> I don't know. It's Good sort idea. of grotesque and kind of wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's strange. Um, oh, and love, it's precious to lovers in Italy, uh, has been considered sacred in India. And many years ago, Italian men would wear a little sprig of it in their uh, lapels to indi indicate like their intended marriage. Oh. Um, so uh, that's kind of fun. Witchy things. It is said that witches would drink basil juice before flying. For reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it, be, it helps with air sickness. Yeah, perhaps it does. <laughs> if it did, that'd be wonderful. It's got like those protective properties. It's said to be sort of used on a bridge between life and death. Ooh. Um, the death aspect uh, corresponds to the Mediterranean ritual of placing basil in the hands of the dead to protect them on their journey to the other world. Ooh. Kind of interesting. And that's just some of the sort of like historical and mythical uses. That doesn't even begin to scratch all of the actual, like the um, further, you know, 
drinking it for digestion. Um, people say to drink it for like release of lost love and invite a new love. Ooh. Or place it in a, a bag or your wallet or your purse to attract financial abundance. Oh. So I've been doing that all wrong. I had no idea I've been <laughs> eating it, but I could have been just probably making a lot of money. Yeah. We've been totally missing the whole point. I have been. So yeah. it's a good thing this podcast causes me to do research that really is going to bring a lot of abundance in my I way, love that I though, because I like the idea that when you're out in your garden and you understand the history of these plants that have been around for, you know, tens of thousands yeah. of years and how um, at people so long ago loved basil as much as we love it today. Yeah. Oh, it's such an interesting thread to the past and uh -huh. people's reactions and responses and um, the stories that have been created around it. It's been a really important herb and just aspect of people's lives for thousands of years. Well, people will be happy to know it's actually pretty easy to grow. Oh, yes. Thank goodness. Thank goodness it is. Uh, uh, basil is an annual which means that it continue. It has its whole life cycle in one season. Mm -hmm. So need new seeds need to be grown every year for mm -hmm. it. And there are about fifty to one hundred and fifty varieties of basil. Oh my gosh, really? Most Ooh. are classified as a sweet basil. Uh huh. Um, and you know they do have their little particularities. One thing about basil is that it likes to be warm. Mm. So it's good to sow basil after your last frost. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know when your last average frost is, there's a link in the show notes to help you find out when that is. For us in the Denver metro area, it is around May 10th. Mm -hmm. So usually folks will start planting basil um, at Mother's Day. Yeah. That's pretty common around the United States mm -hmm. too. As Mother's Day is a really good, safe place to do it. But it does not like being cold. Yeah. I might have planted mine a little early this year. I think it's picking up now, but at first it just didn't do anything. Well, it didn't die, but it did just sit there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's it's catching up now, but yeah, right, it didn't. It probably I, will. I planted it too early and it, it, it hadn't even really Well, another up. thing that could be, because we've had so much rain, Lindsay, mm -hmm. is that basil likes proper drainage. Oh, okay. So if it's sitting in wet soil for a long time, it's going to be unhappy. So yeah. that could be another reason for it too. Mm -hmm. Um. And so if you're doing a container, if you're planting basil in a container plant, make sure you have lots of drainage holes in it. Mm -hmm. um, though, contrary to that is that in addition to liking proper drainage, basil likes to be kept moist. Yeah, interesting. So you really kind of have to stay on the watering of it unless <laughs> you're getting that rain every day. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to moist. Shout out to moist, of always. course. Um, so... Uh, it's so I guess it's yeah it's a fine line between keeping it moist and overwatering mm -hmm. it, um, and you could stunt the growth of it. Um, so maybe you just want to water deeply, like once a week, mm -hmm. depending upon where hmm. you are. But you may have to stick your if you're in a container, stick your finger yeah in the soil to find out. Um, also, when you water, it's important to water the toes and never the nose. So water the soil and not the leaves mm -hmm. because they don't like their leaves to get wet. Okay. Um, and they like lots of sun. Six to eight hours a day would be great. Um, so um, if you, but well, what's nice too is you have it in a container so you can move it around a little bit too mm -hmm. and you can follow the sun. Um, and you, this is the one herb that it's okay to fertilize. Actually, it's a good idea to fertilize it a little bit. Give it a little extra nutrients, like maybe every four to six weeks, even with like some indoor plant food or things like okay. that. Okay. So as opposed to other herbs where you don't want to like get a bunch of leaves that don't have so much flavor. Right. Basil does like to get yeah. a little bit yeah, of- Yeah. It's the okay. one that you can. That's good to know. And um, I would say the one tip about basil is to make sure you harvest early and often. Yeah. No problem there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with basil, um, harvesting and pruning is essentially the same thing. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to start harvesting early so that you'll get a bushier plant. Otherwise, it'll just get very leggy. Yeah. So once it gets to maybe about five to six inches tall, mm -hmm. pinch the top out. Okay. Leave the sides alone. The big leaves are on the bottom. Leave those alone. But just start pinching the top to make it because what will happen is that the plant will shoot out two branches for every pinch you take. Okay. Okay. I need to, I think I need to do more of that. It's the kind of thing I don't think of to do until like, I'm like, oh, that's, that's leggy. And then <laughs> it's like a little late at that point. <laughs> sure. I'll well, try it anyway. You know, but, I think we can, everyone can relate to that because it's what you think about doing. And then you think, do you have the time for it? Yeah. And then by the time you realize it, it's too late. Yeah. By the time, exactly. Where yeah. I was like, oh, right. That was the thing I told myself last year that I was going to do this year. 
And now I'll tell myself that I'm going to do it next yeah. year instead. Well, there's a danger in being too overzealous too. Yeah. So don't go crazy in harvesting your basil. It's best to only harvest about 20% of your plant each time. Okay, that's good to know. Um, some people insist you need to do it with the pin with the pruning shears. Yeah, but boy, I use my fingers. Oh yeah, I just use my fingernails and pin. Yeah, just yeah, just look right a, a little a little pinch off of it. Um, and like I said, you may be drawn to get those to do the big leaves at the bottom. Yeah, leave those there. Leave those there. Oops, a daisy. Okay, just well I've already made little... a couple of mistakes okay. I've identified, <laughs> but good. Now, we're learning. We're living. We're learning. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Well, when we come back, let's talk about um how to plant seeds in the earth, how to buy one in the grocery store, and how to harvest and preserve basil. Can't wait. Hey there, fellow plant enthusiasts. Are you ready to take your gardening game to the next level? Say hello to the basil bonanza. Why, what is this giant elaborate contraption labeled basil bonanza in bright eye-catching colors? It's time to grow basil like never before. No more struggling with tiny pots or waiting ages for your plants to sprout. The Basil Bonanza is here to make growing basil a breeze. Basil Bonanza, the magical grower, makes your basil taller, faster and bolder. Look at that. Basil shoots up like a rocket. It's like a botanical speed race right in your backyard. Mmm, this basil tastes out of this world. Exactly. With the Basil Bonanza, your pesto will be unparalleled. Your caprese salads will be heavenly, and your bruschetta will have everyone begging for the recipe. Basil for everyone! Whee! And the best part? The Basil Bonanza comes with a built-in herb picking feature. Harvesting basil has never been this fun. Voila! A basket full of basil ready to elevate my culinary creations. Basil Bonanza, grow with glee. The basil wander for you and me. Get your Basil Bonanza today and witness the basil growing revolution in your backyard. Basil Bonanza, the ultimate green thumbs up. Hi, Lindsay here, keeping it real. You know, basil is really not that hard to grow. You don't really need anything fancy. Just sow them, keep them warm, keep them moist, and in about three weeks, use them. Save yourself some bucks. Keep it simple and just grow something, okay? So now, Lindsay, yeah. you have planted basil hydroponically. I have. Um, and I just started doing it because um, I did winter sow some and I planted that out. And I thought, well, I'll just put a, why not? I've put like my parsley out, my cilantro out. I've got this free space. So I thought I'd just start a little bit inside. Can you have too much? No. No. And then it'll be my <laughs> it'll be my insurance in case other things go sideways and everything gets hailed on or something. So and really all I did was I got my little sponges that sit in their plastic cages and sit into the 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 water. Um I've stopped using distilled water because it's just too much to like buy it and just waste this. So I just uh -huh. used um filtered water. Oh, okay. I have good filters still, so I just use filtered water and a little bit of the nutrients that come with it and just plunk the seeds right on in there. And they've come up. It, I did that about mm, five or so days ago. I've got some seedlings and- Already? Yeah. And we'll see oh, how quick. fast it goes. I don't know, but I, I hear that Basil likes it pretty well. So I'm optimistic, but um, hopefully I'll get enough and I'll just try planting them out and maybe I'll just keep going. I don't know. It's it's the hydroponic stuff is once you get it going, it's it's really low maintenance. I'm so jealous. So, yeah. <laughs> I have to get one. You're gonna. I have a feeling it's gonna come to you. Arbor well, Day. Remember, Arbor Day. Gifts for your garden friends. Yes. <laughs> well, I, this year, have planted in the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's really pretty easy, friends, to plant basil in the earth. You get a packet of seeds. I have, this year, I'm using, from Botanical Interest, this is called Italian Genovese. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which so is like, it's a sweet basil, right? Sweet basil, big, big leaves. Um, and when you should do it, well, I think any place in the United States, you could you could do it right now. Mm, yeah. A couple but, weeks after mm -hmm. um, your last average frost. Or if you want to just think when the nighttime temperatures are in the 50s. Okay. And you know what? That's also the same time to do tomatoes. Yeah. That's they, why they're, they're such just good buddies. buddies. They're just buddies. Uh, we learned this trick from uh, the folks at Botanical interests and that is it's a good idea to pre-moisten shout, shout out to, out to moist. moist 
the area that you're going to be planting the basil ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Because if you pre-moisten it, then you don't have to water on top of the seeds. And then the seeds don't go wherever they feel like going at that point, wherever they're, they're, they're torn by the vicious (laughs) tides of your hose. (laughs) Right. (laughs) We, the water slide of your hose. (laughs) That's right. Uh, And then according to this packet, it says you should put a group of two seeds every 12 inches. Mm Mm-hmm. But I didn't do that. No, I'm not that precise about it, to be honest. And I'm also like, I'm not that optimistic. And so I always over sow okay. my basil seeds. And um, this year, oh my gosh, I feel like every single seed came up. Oh, wonderful. They say you don't, um, and this is, and you don't uh, sow them very deep, a quarter of an inch. Okay. Yeah. So, so you kind of just sprinkle them on and then just like rough the earth up, sure, up a little you, bit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sprinkle a little yeah I, just, I just threw a little potting soil on okay. top and just kind of st- stepped on it. Um, and then- so they say thin when they're two inches tall. Uh-huh. And so mine are like maybe mine, – mine just came up. And they're so – it's just so great when you go outside and you see that little line of green yes. out there. It's just so exciting. It's such an optimistic feeling. Yes. I feel <laughs> so maybe when I come back in two weeks, I'll have to start thinning them, yeah. which is really hard for me to thin. Oh, it's it does feel like it's like uh, when you're riding. They're always like, kill your darlings. You got to kill some of your kids. Mm. Kill your babies. You got to take yeah. some of them out. Oh, I have such a hard time It is it. hard. But then it's better for the whole – I know, I situation. Do it. So, um, and so that's pretty easy. And I think mine germinated within like maybe, well, maybe like eight or so days. Okay. So not yeah. too long after yours did no, in the hydroponics. Um, of course, you could buy it from the grocery store or from the big box store if you see, or your local nursery mm-hmm. if you see basil already there. To me, it's just a lot easier just to sow in the ground or in a yeah. container. Quick. It's certainly more economical. Oh, mm. that's true. Mm-hmm. Because this whole packet of seeds, which says, this packet of seeds says it sows um, 350 feet of wow. basil. That's a, that's a lot of basil. And I think, and this packet was $1.99. Yep. There you and go. And I bet, right, if you are if you go to a nursery, I mean, you're going to be spending a good five bucks. Yeah. So, uh, but just make sure, um, to make sure that you're seeing a good, healthy plant when mm-hmm. you get one. That's kind of obvious, I suppose. I suppose. Don't don't pick a Charlie Brown basil plant. <laughs> oh, unless you feel just really like, <laughs> you just really feel like your your compassion really kicks up. But it's not going to probably get you the best basil plant out of that. It is not. Um, you, uh, check to see if it needs water. Okay. When you get, when you take it home, because it probably, if you get right. it at a big box store, it probably does. If you get a local nursery, it's probably going to be uh-huh. well taken care of. Um I would recommend repotting it as soon as possible or sticking it in the ground or putting it in your container. Okay. As right opposed away. to like leaving it in a little tray that you get it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Try to get into its permanent home mm-hmm. as soon as possible. Um, and when you take it out of the little pot, kind of tease out the roots a little bit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they, when they're in nurseries, they'll get little root bound. So the roots are all going crazy, going in one circle. Yeah. And they all look, they kind of looks like a net almost. this really tight yeah. net around the soil plug. And if you just stick it in the ground that way, it's just going to keep going crazy. Oh, okay. So even you want to like loosen it so that it'll go out or yeah. down. Yeah, give them a little tease. Okay. You can even cut those roots too and they'll be okay. So, and um, and then make sure you check for watering it frequently because it wants to be moist, but mm-hmm. it doesn't want to be too wet. It doesn't yeah, want to, <laughs> it doesn't want to be in a water theme park. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, And, uh. And maybe you try both. Maybe you get some from the store and maybe, you know, if it's your first time, like you said, insurance, maybe you grow some in the earth or in a container and yeah. see what happens. I kind of like the experimental nature of gardening. Mm, I'd like to mm-hmm. try a couple different methods and just see what happens. I feel very new to it still. So it's all kind of like, well, let's, let's try a few things and see what happens. Throw some stuff at the wall, but not your basil. Don't throw it at the wall. That won't, that won't work. <laughs> I've tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> Tried it. The spaghetti you yeah. throw at the wall. Oh gosh, I remember now. The basil. I remember the basil you put in the ground. God, I forget those two. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had it in a in a pinch in the middle of winter when I just needed basil so bad. I've bought like in the grocery store. You know how you can just buy the leaves. Oh yeah. Of it. Do you ever do that at all? Just like just buy the little packet. You know, it's all packaged mm-hmm. up and it's just the leaves. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized this is that you're not supposed to store that in the refrigerator. You're not. Basil doesn't like cold. Oh, basil right. likes warm. So what you should do, and this is also true if you're harvesting basil from your house and uh-huh. you just want to have it like around, you know, you, you you harvest it out in the garden and you bring it inside. You should treat it like a flower and put it in a vase in your kitchen. Oh, yes, of course. That makes sense. Do you, 
when you've done that, have you had roots grow out of those little stems? I have. I think that this might be another economical way to propagate some basil. I think you're right. <laughs> I actually, um, accidentally, I was, we were expected a big hailstorm was expected for Denver. And so I went around madly covering up every new little precious Aww. thing I'd put in. And I, 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 in my zealousness to protect them, there were one or two plants that I broke instead of saving. Oh no. Which was ironic because the hail never came, but, but uh. you know, Hurricane Lindsay came in and I broke a few things. Oh no. <laughs> one of them was one of like the winter sown basils that I was so proud of. I sort of snapped it off and I snapped all like the whole top, all the leaves off. But I stuck it in some water and I put a little, um, it's like powdered mycorrhizal fungi, mm. um, which comes in like, it's like a thing someone suggested to me. It helps things root. Oh, okay. It gotcha. Yeah. Really uh -huh. has been great, actually. They really like to colon, um, what it, colonize on roots of plants. And in this case, it, I think it really helps the, like in a few days, that little crown of basil had all of these roots. So I planted it out again. And then I saw the poor, sad little stem that I had left over in the dirt had actually grown a bunch of new leaves, oh. little babies. So I accidentally got a two for one basil plant out of it. <laughs> I don't recommend it. But it seems like it propagates pretty well. That's awesome. Yeah. Just sort of like my morning glories, but I don't pull the whole thing mm -hmm. out. They just still will root. It's, yeah, the roots were still there. Or like and a I, dandelion plant or... I really didn't think without any leaves there would be anything to like photosynthesize. But lo and behold, it's it's going. So wow. I'm optimistic for both of them now. And I'm oh. going to tell people I did it on purpose, except for everybody listening to this podcast <laughs> who will know I just accidentally crushed it. They won't say anything. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate it, friends. Thank you for that. Um, well, that is a great way to propagate mm -hmm. basil. Yeah. Um, if you want to preserve all this bounty, yeah. all this basil you're going to get, what I usually do is I usually dry it. Okay. And there's two ways to dry it. Mm -hmm. um, one is you could if you have a dehydrator or you could put it on a low temp oven. Oh, Okay. Like like the lowest, like the warm setting yeah, like or something 175 like that? or okay. something. And you can dry that out pretty quickly if you're in a hurry. Um, but I just take small bunches of it and I just hang it upside down in my attic. Now, when you do that, do you find that the flavor stays the same or does it lose some flavor? Being oh, that's, dried? see, some people would say that you would lose some flavor. Okay. But it's fresh basil. But it's still fresh out of your yeah. garden. So it's still right. got to be, it's not yeah. like it's been sitting on a store shelf for a year and a half. Right. Right, yeah, I might exactly. Try it both ways and see that because I think that you can freeze it. Also, you can, but there are some tricks to it. Oh, okay. I don't know any of the tricks. Well, because basil doesn't like cold. Oh, right. It'll have a tendency to turn a dark color. Okay. And so, if you still want that nice, vibrant green color, mm -hmm. so like I've done this before, like I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to do with all this basil. So I'm just going to make all this pesto. Yeah. And pesto, of course, is this wonderful spread that is basil and pine nuts and parmesan cheese and garlic and olive oil heavenly and it's great in pasta it's great on bruschetta it's it's great as a dip yeah it's great just with a spoon yeah <laughs> i don't know well, if you're I supposed to eat it that way stuff. but i do and then i put it in the freezer and it all turned like a like a dingy gray <laughs> shoot <laughs> I mean, it still tasted okay yeah. but it didn't look very right that appetizing, doesn't look appetizing that bright, bright green how do you um, save that well um, one is that you can um, blanch and freeze basil seeds. So you can um, wash your basil leaves and then um, blanch them in boiling water for okay. 15 seconds. Which is like a dip in. In and, boiling and, water. Okay. And then plunge them into ice water to stop the cooking process. Then dry them and then flash freeze them in freezer bags. Okay. So that's, that's a lot of work, though. Yeah, that's a, that's quite a few steps to yeah. <laughs> to save. Like, especially when I've got like three cups of this stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is more than I can do anything with. You're right. That's more than I want. But if you have the time and energy, yeah. a quicker way, though, I don't. I hear it's not as successful. Is to just um, instead of the blanching part, just wash and freeze them. So discard the stems, spread out the cookie sheets. Uh -huh. And put your basil on a cookie sheet and flash freeze them and then transfer the frozen basil to freezer bags and use them as needed without the blanching. Okay. Um, and then you just maybe accept some loss of color. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good to know. Um, some folks say if you just chop 
and freeze it with a food processor and mix it in with some olive oil and put it in ice cube trays. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that that's a thing that people do. Ice cube trays kind of, maybe the olive oil sort of protects it. Before. Yes. If you freeze it, if you uh -huh. don't, it doesn't work if you don't freeze it. Right. Otherwise you could get sick. You can get like, botulism. Yeah, botulism. Yeah. That's a, that's a big, <laughs> I see all of these, like there's wonderful vinegars and oils you can do that are infused with all these fresh herbs, but you can't, like I make a salad dressing with fresh thyme mm. that I love, love, love Ooh. over the summer. It's wonderful. I'll give you the recipe if you want it, but you can't um, just leave it out like you would leave out normal oil and vinegar. Gotcha. Unless if it's dried thyme, it's fine, but if it's fresh, you got to refrigerate mm -hmm. it and then like let it come to room temperature to use. I imagine that's the same with basil I think too. it's the same thing. Beautiful flavor, but you can't just leave yeah. that out. Well, that's why it's so great in the summer. Yeah. I mean, it's never going to be, it's sort of, you know, tomatoes are never going to be the same in the winter. That's true. And basil is never going to be the same in the winter either. Mm -mm. And that's probably why they're buddies. That's right. That's why they're best friends. The best together. So good. Uh, you have a recipe, right? I do. Uh, so here is my very favorite recipe to make with uh, both with basil and also tomatoes. Um, I had my last one at the very end of the season last year, and I've been dreaming of it ever since. Um, it's sort of a, it's kind of a pomodoro. It's not quite, but it's basically a cherry tomato version of a pomodoro um, sauce, uh, and it is um, wonderful. Uh, and this is from Love and Lemons. I'm going to give them the credit for this. Uh, but you can um, use sort of any kind of pasta, spaghetti, bucatini, any sort of long pasta, um, olive oil. Three garlic cloves, it says. I tend to double garlic in my recipes. Mm -hmm. um, and um, any of the cherry tomatoes that you've got growing in your garden, roughly three pints, um, several cups, however you want. And um, you can use a couple of tablespoons of capers, um, a couple Ooh. of teaspoons of lemon zest to really brighten it up. Ooh. And um, little red pepper flakes just to give a little. I totally believe in red pepper flakes and pasta sauce. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. And then you've got like a good cup and a half or two cups of of your fresh basil and you basically what you want to do is um and like a good deep skillet or dutch oven or something you're going to heat the oil you're going to heat up the that garlic for just like a minute just to get it soft and like get the oil fragrant and then you're adding in half of the tomatoes you just can have the tomatoes and toss in half of that till they really break down and make it kind of saucy then add the other half of the tomatoes for just like a oh. minute. Um, so you've got some of that texture of that tomato yeah, still. Yeah, I like that tip. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. You add in your lemon zest, you add in your capers. And then, you know, once you've cooked that pretty well, um, then you're just going to add in the basil and the cheese right at the end and you stir in your pasta. And I had never made a pasta sauce like this before. And I tried it once and I was like, what have I been wasting my time mm. with? all of my life not eating this I yeah. could have so we can maybe link this in the notes and it'll be more there'll be more specifics but I've been dreaming of it and I'm still gonna have to wait until like July for those tomatoes to really do their thing but cherries come out first that's good I we've planted a bunch of them and I am I'm just drooling thinking about it so that sounds like summer in a bowl it doesn't it and it is it's wonderful and a little lemon zest just brightens it all up and I could just mainline that stuff Friends, if you are not growing basil this summer, mm -hmm. what's your problem? Yeah. What are you waiting for? <laughs> get out what are you there. waiting for? Unless you hate basil, which is, you know, you do you. I don't get it. But otherwise, stick it in a pot. Put it in a windowsill. Put it on a mm. step. You can – It's it does grow pretty easily if you got enough sun. So I think you can do it. Hey, Lindsay. Yeah? Guess what time it is. What time is it? It's mailbag time. Ring, ring. Do we have a letter this week, Lindsay? We do. We have a, a letter from Patrick, um, who has sent us a number of excellent uh, garden mistakes. Which is interesting because he is an amazing gardener. And um, and yet, even the most amazing gardeners, we can celebrate our mistakes, That's right? That's so good. That's such a good reason to not be discouraged. It happens mm -hmm. to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, dear Upside Down Tulips, a big mistake. Waiting too long to protect from deer. We might have a nice shrub and admire it and say, maybe we should put up some fencing around that before the deer get it. And they must have small microphones planted around the garden because that night <laughs> the deer will come. Nibble the plants to nubs. Oh, no. Yo, we're definitely learning to protect plants early. This year, they got our choke berries. Last year, it was our young apple and a lot of others. They're voracious, those oh. deer, aren't they? 
terrible. If it's not the little creepy crawlies trying to get your stuff, it's the big herbivores. Right, right. I know sometimes. all the things. Well, I was smart this year. I mean, I took this advice mm-hmm. because usually I get out my bird netting out too late to protect my strawberry patch mm-hmm. and the squirrels will get it. Yeah. And if I didn't see a squirrel eating an unripe strawberry. Oh, you want to like you're not even giving me a chance. Yeah. And deer, of course. Yeah. I've had deer, and they also would eat my flowers, too. Oh, yeah. I had a, a friend who just, like, put out a beautiful hanging basket, basket, and it was elevated above the ground. She thought it was safe, but she came out the very next morning, and they had just chewed it all down to nubbins, just nothing. They're voracious uh, yeah. critters. Protect. They really are. Some people try that um, motion-activated water sprayer. Oh. And then it starts really high. And so uh-huh. if something that's the height of a deer comes by, yeah. it'll shoot water in its direction. Okay. Well, I want, I'm curious how that works. That's good. We're going to try, it's not for deer, but we're going to try cayenne in the bird feeder oh, this yes. year because birds don't sense cayenne. But they, but um, the squirrels don't. The like squirrels it. absolutely do sense it, and they don't like it at all. So, no, we're all just in the battle to try to keep the woodland creatures from eating all of the wonderful things we're growing. It's, right. uh, it's you know, the battle wages on and we don't win it all of the time. But thank you for sharing that great piece of advice, Patrick, mm-hmm. because you shouldn't wait too long to yeah. protect your wonderful garden from the critters. That's a good point. Don't wait until you see the critters. Just know that they're coming and, they're, yeah. and that they've bugged your plants <laughs> and they're waiting. I know. They're smart. Home. They're really smart. Boy, they've got a surveillance system. They do. They do. They must. <laughs> Well, folks, if you have your favorite gardening mistakes that you want to share with us or you have questions or comments, uh, will you please write to us at UpsideDownTulips.com or at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail. Well, everything seems to be going so great in the garden, but boy, I still think we could use some extra inspiration. Lindsay, do you have some for us today? I sure do. Uh, our inspiration this time comes from Louis Untermeyer, uh, who was a poet and wrote this little gem. I never knew the earth had so much gold. The fields run over with it. And this hill, hoary and old, is young with buoyant blooms that flame and thrill. That is beautiful. Isn't that nice? Oh, all those images come into my head. Yeah, it's short, but it's packed with those images. And it does make me just want to go. It makes me want to run through a hill, (laughs) singing the hills are alive, just through fields. Yes. Doesn't it? With and without clothes. (laughs) Yeah, with or I as the case may both. Why limit yourself? Right. Well, that was a fun episode. Everyone, you've reached the end of another episode of Upside Down Tulips. We are Lindsay Pierce and Christy Montour Larson. And if you got some laughs and some value out of this week's episode, could you do us a favor? Could you hit that subscribe, like, or follow button wherever you listen to your podcasts? And thank you so much to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you want more, just go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link at upsidedowntulips.com. And thanks to the many talents and the kind heart of Edith Weiss. And thank you to our excellent yet enigmatic engineer. Join us in two weeks for another episode that will delight and amaze you. And don't forget, Lindsay, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Upside down to